In this video, what we're going to look at is evaluation and transposition and we are just going to focus on solving past paper questions from different past paper over the years, alright? So the first one says, find the value of 2 pi times the square root of L divided by G where pi is equal to 3.14, L is equal to 0 0.625, and G is equal to 10. Alright? So they want us to find the value. So we know that we have 2 pi times the square root of L divided by G. So it's going to be 2. Where you see pi sub C, you are going to replace pi with the value of pi. So that's going to be 3.14. 3.14 times the square root of L. What is L? L is 0 0.625. All divided by G, which is 10. At this stage, you can just put all of this on your calculator. Or you can try to simplify it down some more. So 2 times 3.14 is equal to 6.28 times the square root of 0 0.625 divided by 10 is equal to 1 quarter, right? 1 quarter times 6.28 is equal to 1.57 approximately to 2 decimal place, all right? Let's look at the second one. The formula for the volume of a cylinder is given as V equal pi R squared H. Make R the subject of the formula, right? So we know that V is equal to R squared. V is equal to pi r squared h right and they want us to make r the subject of the formula in other words they are saying that we must transpose this formula to make r the subject right so in this case v is the subject so we want to manipulate this and get r by itself right so here you notice that r squared is being multiplied by pi and it's also be multiplied by h. So we want to get rid of this pi and we want to get rid of h. If they are multiplying, we can divide. So we can divide both sides by pi h. Whatever you do to one side, you need to do it to this side. So you divide this side by pi h. Now pi will cancel out pi. And h will cancel out h. So on this side, we are left back with r squared is equal to v divided by pi h. Now you want r by itself. So r is being squared. So you want to get rid of this 2. So you can take the square root of this side. And whatever you do to one side, you need to do it to the other. So you take the square root of this side as well. So the square root sign cancel out the 2. You're left back with R is equal to the square root of V divided by pi times H. And that's it. That's how you make R the subject of the formula. Question number 3. A formula is given as D equal the square root of 4H divided by 5 determine the values of determine the values of d when h is equal to 29 give your answer correct to three significant figures All right so we know that d is equal to the square root of 4h 
over 5. They told us that h is equal to 29, which means that when you see h, replace it with 29. So d is equal to the square root of 4 times 29 all over 5. Right? So d is equal to the square root 4 times 29, that is 160 over 5. So d is equal to the square root of 116 divided by 5, which is equal to 4.82 correct to 3 significant figures. Now to part I, I make H the subject of the formula, right? So now we know that D is equal to the square root of 4H over 5 and they want us to make H the subject of the formula. So what we need to do we need to get rid of all of these operations around each. So what we can get rid of first is this square root sign. So to get rid of the square root sign, we are going to square both sides. So we're going to square this side as well. By squaring both sides, this square cancels out the square root sign. So we're left back with 4h over 5 is equal to d squared. Now we want to get rid of this 5, we are going to multiply both sides by 5 and multiply this side by 5. 5 will cancel out 5, so we end up with 5d squared is equal to 4h. Now 1h by itself and this 4 is multiplying the h, we are going to do the opposite to divide both sides by 4. The 4 cancel out 4, so therefore h is equal to 5d squared over 4. Alright? Let's look at another problem. Now to question 4. The quantities f, m, u, v, and t are related according to the formula f equal m times v minus u all divided by t. Part A. Find the value of f when m equal 3, u equal negative 1, v equal 2, and t equal 1. So we know f is equal to m, open bracket, v minus u, close bracket, all divided by t. And they want us to find the value of f when m equal 3 so f is equal to instead of writing back m we're going to substitute the value of m into this formula so m is equal to 3 so it's going to be 3 open bracket v v is 2 so it's going to be 2 minus u u is negative 1 so that's going to be negative 1 All of this divided by t and t is positive 1. So f is equal to now negative times negative that's going to become positive. So inside of the bracket here this is going to be 2 plus 1 2 plus 1 that's 3 and 3 times 3 that is 9 and this is 9 over 1 that is just 9. So f is equal to 9 right so f is equal to 9 so now to part b of the question it says make v the subject of the formula so we know that f is equal to m times v minus u all divided by t. They want us to make v the subject of the formula. That means we want v on one side of the equation by itself. 
Now what we are going to do is to get rid of the t first. How can we get rid of this t? We are dividing by t. The opposite of dividing by t is to multiply by t. So we are going to multiply both sides by t. If we multiply this side by t, t cancel out t. And this side we left back with m times v minus u. And on this side, f times t does give us f t. Now we can we are multiplying by m here. The opposite of multiplying by m is to divide by m. So we are going to divide both sides by m. m cancel out m. We left back with v minus u. And on this side we left back with f t all over m. Now we want to get rid of u. So we are subtracting u here. So in order to get rid of u, we are going to add u to both sides. So we are going to add u to this side. And we are also going to add u to this side. So u minus, minus u plus u, that's going to give us 0. So our final answer is going to be v equal f t divided by m plus u. Alright? And that's how you may be the subject of the formula. Let's look at another problem. Let's say number five. Make x the subject of the formula. Y equal x divided by five plus three p. So we know that y is equal to x divided by five plus three p. Right? And we want to make x the subject of the formula. That means we want to get x by itself, right? Or x equal to something. Now we, are, we have a plus 3p here, which means that we need to get rid of this plus 3p. Now if you have 3p and you want to get rid of it, we can subtract 3p from both sides of the equation. So if we subtract 3p from this side, can just put minus 3p and we subtract 3p from this side so on this side we're going to have y minus 3p is equal to positive 3p minus 3p here that's going to cancel out so all you left back with is just x over 5 now you want to get rid of this 5, all you need to do is to multiply both sides by 5. Multiply this side by 5 as well. So that 5 will cancel out 5. So therefore, x is equal to 5 times y minus 3p. Alright? Let's look at our final question for this video. Question number 6. John drew a diagram below to show what he was thinking. Input x, then maps on to multiply by 3, then maps on to add 5, then output y. Part A. Use information from the diagram to write a formula for y in terms of x. So they want us to write a formula from this diagram here. Right? So, we know that they want us, we must write the formula for y in terms of x, meaning that y must equal to something in terms of x. Right? So, we know that y is going to equal to something. So, here you have x, then you must multiply x by 3. Then add 5, so it would be 3x plus 5. All right. Part B, if the number 4 is input, what number would be the output? So if you input 4, what number would be the output? If you put 4 here, you're going to multiply the 4 by 3. So 4 times 3, that's 12. Then you are going to add 5 to the 12. That's going to give you 17. So therefore, the output which is y, y is going to equal to 17, all right? If the, if the number 8 was the output, 
right? What number was the input? So they tell us that y is equal to 8. What number is the input? One way you could do it, you could sub 8 into this formula here, or you could just work this problem back way. So if you had 8, you add 5, you would have add 5. So if you're going backwards, you'd have doing the opposite of add was to, is to subtract. So 8 minus 5, that would give us 3. The opposite of multiply is to divide. So 3 divided by 3 would be 1. So x is actually equal to, to, to 1. Right? So the answer for this part here, which is the input, is x equal 1. Alright? Now, reverse the formula written at a above to write x in terms of y right so in other words they want us to transpose this formula to make x the subject of the formula so we know we need x we want x to equal to something all right now it is simple based on what i just did for this problem if we work back way x is going to equal to y minus 5 all of that divided by 3 and that's it let's test it we know that x is equal to 1 here but they tell us that y was actually equal to 8 let's put 8 here if we put 8 here 8 minus 5 would give us 3 and 3 divided by 3 would give us 1 so that is one way that you can use to test it all right Thanks for watching and do enjoy the rest of your day.